Hello and welcome to Jamaica TV, where we give you all the latest news. Now for the details. The police have attributed Wednesday's daring rifle attack in Montego Bay, St. James, which ended with three persons fatally wounded and seven others injured, including a 10-year-old, that it was orchestrated by gangsters based in the second city. The deceased men have been identified as 27-year-old Leon Brown of William Street, 20-year-old Rashad Watson, and Robert Edley of King Street. The Corporate Communication Unit, CCU, the police information arm, confirmed the incident, which is said to have happened sometime after 2 p.m. There was a chase, which reportedly began in the vicinity of Clock Tower along Upper Barnet Street, where the unknown assailants initially opened fire. An illegal weapon was recovered following the incident. A sentenced security guard has been charged in connection with the fatality of 37-year-old Ergil Johnson on Tuesday, October 5th at Mason Hall District in St. Mary. The police said a 36-year-old Lorenzo Paddyfoot, otherwise called Puddy, of Brightnut Hill in St. Anne, was charged with the fatal wounding and illegal possession of rifle and ammunition. Lawman said that Johnson was at a wake at about 11.45 p.m., when a dispute developed between him and a woman. Paddyfoot reportedly intervened and discharged two rounds hitting Johnson. Johnson passed away at the hospital. Paddyfoot later turned himself into the police and handed over the weapon. The last San Venice event saw her common law husband, 43 year old fisherman Mark Kirk Richards. He was fresh from a bath after making Sunday dinner. About five minutes later, she heard shouts coming from outside. She went to see what the commotion was about and saw Richard's body in a pool of blood at a shop near their home at Black's Bay in Belmouth, Westmoreland. Residents said that shortly after 2 p.m., Richard and a man had an argument over goats the man wanted to purchase. Richard refused to sell him the animal, they said. An eyewitness reported that the man then went home and returned with a short weapon, which he allegedly used to inflict wounds to Richard in his upper body. The man later fled the scene. The police have told the man's father that if he returned, he should turn him over to them. Investigations are ongoing. Millions of dollars are being spent to bring both water and electricity to residents of North Trelawney, many of whom have been without the essential commodities for up to 60 years. Member of Parliament for the constituency, Tavor Hamilton, outline the work she has undertaken so far and her plans going forward during her recent contribution to the state of the constituency debate in the House of Representatives. Hamilton noted that the town of Falmouth was one of the first in Jamaica to receive pipe water in 1799. She added that the Marchabre River, which runs through Trelawney, supplies the parishes of St. Anne and St. James, yet many of her constituents who find themselves without the life-saving commodity are left to ponder whether water is really alive. The MP revealed, to date, she have trucked water to residents and provided more than 38 black tanks as a temporary measure. Our advocacy has yielded positive responses from the National Water Commission as the work have been undertaken to expand their services and improve distribution. The recent completion of Phase 1 of the Wakesfield to Bunkers Hill Pipeline Replacement Project has improved water supply to residents of Wakefield, Friendship, and Bunker Hill at a cost of approximately $6 to $9 million. A local physician is urging the government to revitalize the mosquito vector control program in an effort to control disease-causing mosquitoes, such as the Aedes, that spread dengue fever. In an interview, Dr. Lincoln Wright, a community-based physician in Port Mario, St. Mary particularly called for more public education and door-to-door -door inspection, similar to that of a vibrant mosquito vector control program in the 1960s, he said. According to Wright, only spraying and debushing will not control the mosquitoes. Fogging should not be the only major mosquito control. In the early 60s and pre-independence, what we had was a program called Mosquito Vector Control Program. That program needs to be resuscitated. Dr. Wright said. Additionally, the doctor said the government should make an announcement when mosquito fogging is to be done in different communities because the chemical can be very harmful when inhaled. It is only proper to provide a 
schedule. Persons can die due to allergic reactions because of the chemical that is there, Dr. Wright stated, adding that people with respiratory illnesses should be extra careful when inhaling the chemical from foggings. Amidst criticism over the F fines being added down to some Jamaicans for breaching the Disaster Risk Management Act, Chief Justice of the Parish Courts Chester Crooks have defended the imposition of the significant fines, noting that they act as a deterrent to further COVID-19 breaches. It was reported last month that several persons were fined up to $200,000 for failing to wear masks in public spaces and breaching curfew orders when they appear in the St. Thomas Parish Court. Additionally, two sisters from St. Thomas made headlines after they cried foul after they were each fined $200,000 for not wearing a mask. While speaking at a conversation with the judiciary session with the media on Friday, Crooks argued that the fines that were handed down in St. Thomas assisted in getting people to adhere to the COVID-19 protocols. Based on the reports we got the next day, after the fines were imposed, there was not one person in St. Thomas who was walking around without a mask, he claimed. Crooks also told critics of the fine being handed down, especially in relation to wearing of the mask, that it is not a simple offense for which a small fine is appropriate. It's not just about, it's a mask. And why are you finding them so high? We are literally apart from saving your own life. You're saving the life of another Jamaican, the judge declared. While noting that there have been variation in sentences in other parishes when compared to the recent case in St. Thomas, Crooks highlighted that some persons' fine will be higher than others based on the circumstances surrounding how they breached the DRMA. Opposition leader Mark Golan made all calls last month for the government to implement a ticketing system under the DRMA to prevent Jamaica's paying FD fines for any breach committed under that act. The government is yet to respond to that proposal. Member of Parliament for Westmoreland Western, Moreland Wilson, says some $75 million had been allocated to construct a fruit and vegetable market in the resort town of Negril. According to Wilson, stakeholders in a constituency have been clamoring for the facility for more than 30 years. I am pleased that having toured Negril recently, the Honorable Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Desmond McKenzie, have set aside $75 million for the construction of the Negril Fruits and Vegetable Market, Wilson said on Thursday during his maiden presentation in the State of the Constituency debate in the House of Representatives. At present, the absence of the facility has resulted in vendors plying their goods in less than desirable conditions on a private property in the town. Wilson expressed hope that construction for the much-needed facility will commence by the end of the year.